Yeah, good evening, everyone. Very happy to see you here once more. And uh, this time we hit the ground running. So we are starting with a proper introduction to project management. And we'll then, from there, we'll see how much we can cover. So I'll be trying as much as I can to cover much. Okay, this is what we have for this um, particular module. Have a project management after the introduction, look at the project management rules, uh, project management team rules, project management components, uh, project management techniques, project management methodologies, then we'll focus a bit on agile project management and we'll look at tools in project management and soft skills in project management and then project management life cycle framework and uh, uh, we'll close we we'll have a, a lot of materials so we'll be uploading that will help you um, to boost your skills and your knowledge so this is what we are going to be looking at within the next um, two weeks. And without wasting time, this is um, the way we are going to look at uh, project management at the introductory level, look at the definition, the growth of project management, factors for creation of project, importance of project management, the absence of project management in a project, the impact, and then the characteristics of a good project management. And this will we consider to be the introductory level within this module. So then let's look at just the, the general um introduction from the professional point of view and uh, that's from the pmi like i said we are going to be making a lot of references to the pmi uh, system of project management according to pmi project management is the application of knowledge skills tools and techniques to project activities to meet the project requirements. Project management is accomplished through the appropriate application and integration of the project management processes identified for the project. Project management enables organizations to execute project effectively and efficiently. This is a very fantastic definition. I don't think there is any other definition that uh, supersedes this particular definition. As you see, the project management is uh, when we bring together all the project management tools, techniques, methodologies, integrate them seamlessly. And that is what we talk about managing a project from the professional point of view. As we know, there are so many ways you can manage a project. Most of our life activities, everything is a project. If you are cooking food, the project, you are going to work, everything is a project. But that's not the kind of projects we are talking. We are talking about project from, from professional point of view. So this is the, 
the definition we are going to adopt for this course and this model. So it's a very straightforward definition. It doesn't need so much uh, explanation. Then we'll look at the growth of project management recently. According to the Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics, employers will need around 87.7 million project management professionals by 2027. That's the projection. And that's why whenever you open up internet or any job portal, you see countless of project management opportunities here and there. You know, I keep I keep getting um, calls, you know, in, invitations, even offers. There's a lot. If you have the skills, you are going to be the one to be selecting jobs. Not there's the, the, the issue that there is no job is not for you. There is countless of jobs. So the, the this projection is based on statistics, based on um, the data uh, uh, generated and analyzed from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So, and is uh, well respected uh, uh, data um, data structure. So this is government. Um, prediction and projection. This prediction will be the fastest growth rate for project managers in IT so far. The rate is 12%. The rate 12% is faster than the average for all other occupations. So you can see project management um, um opportunities is higher 12 percent higher than others even in, in um those in health professional used to be health professional that's uh, been highly sought after before but is no longer is now project managers if you go any aspect of project management skill man you are very good Then let's look at factors for creating projects. Why this high growth in project management? Something must be causing that. And the reason for this high growth in project management, number one, is new technology. For instance, advances in computer memory lead to developing of a faster, cheaper, and uh, smaller laptop. Now you can see we have different kind of um, mobile application, laptop, mobile phone. And we even have the, the, the more the, the technology changes, the more we have uh, advanced one. Now you see companies are now moving to the cloud. This is a new technology. Cloud application is a new technology, and every company wants to be on the cloud. If you want to, to compete effectively, if you want to reach your target audience, you want to reach your customers, you have to be on the cloud. This is the reason so many companies, you cannot even do without going to the cloud these days. We have so many software as a service, <laughs> software as a platform. Please mute yourself software as a service, software as this or software as that, all of them are cloud technology. So you see a lot of cloud migration projects. These are the activities, driving projects. Before you were, if you have the, the, the capacity as an organization to have a, this legacy application, on, on, on premises application. Yeah, it used to be very good, but these days 
everybody is going to the cloud and it will continue to be so. So you continue to drive um, this market. Competitive forces. To remain competitive in the market, you need to develop a competitive product like touch screen, mobile phone, and uh, computers. Now you can see, we are just talking about um, ordinary application, uh, cloud application, but no, the um, Meta, which is former Facebook, has now advanced the competition within the market. Now they are, they are now introducing a Metaverse. A Metaverse is a cloud-based application where you can operate uh, within 3Ds, um, application for these application and more more these coming so so many other companies like google microsoft they, they have started developing their own metaverse because if they need to be in the market if they don't want facebook to compete them out of the market everybody need to have this uh, metaverse product so many companies are now beginning to buy properties in the metaverse. We don't even know how that metaverse is going to be. But a plot of land in metaverse is costlier than a plot of land in London, in the high streets of London. So that's how the way they um, classify and they regard metaverse. And see how um costly and how lucrative this particular technology is every other companies facebook amazon everybody they want to be please mute yourself so these are the competitive forces that's driving so many um uh, project management oriented uh, activities. When Apple started developing touch screen, Nokia, Blackberry, they don't use to develop touch screen, but because of the competitiveness of the market, all of them need to start developing touch screen. If they didn't develop such by now, they should be out of the market. So that's how competitive forces drive projects, um, project management industry. Then we talk about material issues. But when you talk about material issues, talk about fixing of facilities, broken facilities like road, bridges. These are facilities. And we need to um, fix all this um, tear and wear within all these uh, facilities. This will lead to more projects, political changes. A newly elected politician or political office holders will want to initiate new projects and policies. This will equally drive uh, project management um, activities. Markets and environmental demand. Project to build electric cars in response to climate change. This is what the market is demanding, and this is what the uh, environment is demanding as well. We are looking at um, um controlling the the climate responding to the climate reducing pollution that's why elon musk become the richest man in the whole world today this is uh, the kind of uh, so many companies have been working hard to produce similar products within the automobile industry so these are who, who, who manages all these projects? Project managers. Economic 
changes. An economic downturn will result in a change in priorities for current projects. When we have economic changes, like now we have inflation, people will uh, tend to uh, concentrate on econ economy products, not luxurious products. And this will, will, will lead to companies responding to these economic uh, changes within the, 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 the household or within their customer um, base. Looking at all these, these are the things that drives project management activities. Customers requests. In response to a specific customer demand, companies tend to produce specific products. During COVID-19, there is high closure, lockdown everywhere globally, but the companies want to st still remain um, operationals and to handle this, a lot of people tend to start working from home. Companies encourage people to work from home. And this leads to a video conferencing application like Zoom. These days, because of this, a lot of people working from home is now a standard. There's no company, only few companies that um, does not adopt working from home. If they are not doing it 100%, they do it on hybrid basis, like 50-50 or 60-40, like three days from home and two days in the office. This kind of uh, customer requests and changes within, within the market, these are the things that are driving project management activities. More application like Zooms are coming because this is a standard. Everybody tend to, 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 to have virtual meeting, virtual church worship, virtual town hall meeting. Everything now is now virtual, virtual classroom, virtual project collaboration, virtual workplace. And to do that, you need to have meeting like video meeting uh, so that you can uh, get your transcript. All these activities drives projects. Stakeholder demands. The stakeholder requires that a new output be produced by the organization in order to increase um, revenue or to increase or uh, uh, improve on processes. This is how all these activities drive projects. Legal requirements, health and safety um, of the units establish guidelines for the proper handling of uh, new toxic materials. When such regulation comes out, any company that doesn't comply with this regulation will be in trouble. And this will lead to more projects. Trying to be compliant will lead to more projects. Like GDPR, every company now in terms of data protection, data management, data, every company in Europe and the UK, they are working so hard to comply with the uh, this data protection law. This is how legal requirement drives projects. Business process improvement. Automation of business processes to improve efficiency. Every company is now adopting robotic process automation because activity you will perform manually in one week, robotic process automation will perform that activity in one hour. And that is saving the company the resources 
for five, four days and some fractions. This is how this kind of uh, business improve, uh, process improvements, technologies, this is how they drive projects. Strategic opportunity or business need, creation of new pro, uh, products, product line to increase revenue. Company tend to grow. When they are comfortable with the level of project, um, product line they have, they tend to add more products, product line within their portfolio. They keep on increasing their portfolio gradually. Uh, all this, this is a strategic um, business uh, goal. It drives projects. Social need. NGOs providing portable water system, toilets, sanitation of communities suffering from high rates of infection, like when we have Ebola virus and um, COVID-19. All of us, so we, we see the kind of, even in terms of um, COVID, the, the project keeps increasing trying to contain this uh, pandemic. It created so many opportunities. So many opportunities. So these are the key factors. There are so many of them. If we keep going, we'll keep going. Uh, we, we might not end. But these are the key factors driving projects. This is important so that you know how these jobs are coming. You need to understand how, why is it project? This is the reason why we have countless project management jobs and opportunities everywhere. The importance of project management, all these factors, Company cannot just dive in and start creating projects. They need good project managers. And good project managers means good project management. Effective project management helps individual group, public and private organization to meet business objectives. You have business objective, but if you don't have good project management structure, it will be very difficult to meet those business objectives. You need to plan. We need to organize. You need to collaborate. That's the only way you can meet your business objectives to satisfy stakeholders' expectations. When stakeholders have objective, goal to achieve, vision, roadmap, they need satisfaction. To have this satisfaction, you need to apply best practice project managers, best practice project management. To be more predictable, when you have good project management, you should be able to, project, to, to predict your project, whether the project is going towards failure or whether the project is going towards a success, you should be able to project or to predict, predict the outcome of a project. If you are using um, rate management or when you look at your rate log and you see a lot, a lot of um, red colors within your rate, Red log. Nobody is, is telling you that um, you don't need anybody to tell you that your project is heading towards doom. Just a glance at your red, red log, you know how healthy your project is. And that's how you need, why you need a good project management using all these techniques, technologies like RAID, uh, JIRA, project management. Um, 
applications like uh, Microsoft Project Planner and the rest of them. So when you use all these, looking at Gantt chart, you know where your project is, is, is heading towards. If you are using something like Jira, all this, all this um, application I'm mentioning, we are going to treat them in details. So you don't need to worry. So when you are looking at something like Jira, just looking at the burn down charts, you know whether you are successful or you are not successful. Looking at your stakeholder analysis documents, if you've done your if you've done a good stakeholder analysis, you know the stakeholders that are giving you trouble. So if you ignore those stakeholders, then you know you are looking for trouble because you already have indicators, you have flashes already. So that's why it's important to apply good project management. But if you're not uh, applying all these technologies and all these techniques, you won't be seeing all this. You won't be able to predict your project. Increase chances of success. When you apply all these techniques and technology, there is chances that you will succeed in your project um, delivery. Deliver the right product at the right time. It's, it's, uh, yeah, this particular word is easier said than done. It's not easy to deliver the right product at the right time if you don't have good uh, project management structure. That's why we have um, scope creep. Project is like, when you are managing a project, it's like when you are driving a car. If you're on the road, on your lane, that is where you are managing a project. If you don't have a good, you are not a good driver, it will be very easy for you to enter another lane. That is how it works. So there is no way you can get to your destination on time if you don't know, if you didn't plan well. It's very, 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 very difficult. If you are, for instance, I'm living in Rockford and I've not been to central London before and I want to go to central London, it will take me a whole day to travel to central London. But if I plan my, my movement to central London, I will Google it, look at the map, the, if I'm using bus, I'll look at the bus lane. I'll look at all the bus lane from my house, in the, the connections, how I will connect from bus to train, from train, which train, where am I coming out? These are planning. So if you need to, to deliver the right product at the right time, you need to plan. Or you deviate, you, you, you will deviate so easily if there is no good planning. Resolve problems and issues. How do you resolve problems and issues if you have good plan? You have good uh, risk management. When you do your risk analysis very well, you should be see the risk coming even before it becomes an issue. You've spotted it. You've made a plan to mitigate the risk before the risk comes. So as soon as the risk, uh, the, the, the the risk is coming or you're having an issue applying the, the risk management plan. Plan for that particular type of risk. Or you can do the transfer the risk, accept the risk, manage the risk. So, and that is how it was. You know how to escalate the risk from one person to the other because you plan. But if you do not plan, you don't know, you do not know how to manage a risk and project is full of risk. When you are managing projects, you are managing resources, you are managing money, you are managing people. You start a project with a group of people you've never met, met before. But because you have a plan to manage any kind of um, 
personality. Once you are seeing it, you, be, you will see an indicator showing you this the kind of um, person, complex stakeholders. A stakeholder, a complex stakeholder is a big risk. When you schedule a meeting with a stakeholder twice and the stakeholder didn't turn up, it, this will have a negative impact on your project because you work with time. Your project time is, is fast moving and you are not getting results. Any meeting you miss, you are not getting results. So you should know how to manage stakeholders by doing thorough stakeholder analysis before meeting a stakeholder. So that's how it will help you to manage, uh, resolve problems and issues. Respond to risk in a timely manner. So when the risk is coming, you capture the risk within your read log. Analyze the risk, look at the mitigation plan, assign the risk to the, the subject uh, domain expert within that risk, and it will be resolved. But if you don't have such plans, when you have a risk, the next thing you do is as a project manager, you run to your program manager uh, to start calling your project manager. The program manager will know that you are not a good project manager because you shouldn't be coming to the program manager for every risk. You should be able to manage your risk very well. So that's why it's good to have good project management uh, structure. Optimize the use of resources. The resources you have there, we have um, human resources, you have uh, uh, material resources, we have, um, yeah, material resources, yeah, money. But you should know how to manage all these resources. You should know the amount of time to apportion to every task and every role and how much you should be paying for every role and for every task to make sure you have enough money to run that project. If they, they, so many projects, they will give you a fixed rate, a fixed amount of money, a fixed budget for the project. So it's left for you, I give you, for instance, 10,000 pounds to deliver this project in three months. So you, it's left for you to see how you can build a mobile app within three months with 10,000 pounds. If you don't know how to manage projects, it's going to be very difficult to do that. But once you know how to manage projects, once you break your project down into breakdown structures, you look at the activities and then the activity, you allocate resources to activity and you keep refining and optimizing it till you get what you want. That's how you optimize the use of organizational resources within a project. We're coming to all these things where we're going to deal with all these things, uh, treat them in detail so you understand how it works. Identify, recover, terminate failing projects. In a, in, in a project management, at times you terminate a project, when you see that there is a clear indication you cannot recover this project and the project is heading towards disaster, in order to reduce um, loss, it's best to terminate the project. It's, it's, it's very easy to identify ailing projects, projects that are not performing. Another thing is when the market is changing, this this happens more often in uh, agile methodology. That's why agile is very good. When you are managing a project and the market is changing, 
you are developing an, an uh, you are developing an application for the market and you find out that the application you are developing is fast becoming obsolete when you deploy such application to the market customers might not really want to use that application anymore that's why you see companies at times they start doing auctioning they start doing sales some of these happen because they don't have good project managers they should be able to know the amount of um summer clothing based on statistics they should be producing within a summer and the amount of winter products or materials they should be producing within that period of time and to know if particular fashion is becoming outdated not to go back and start producing that fashion again if there is a good business analyst do all the analysis do all the um, data analytics you should be able to know whether this project or this particular product is no longer is, is out of fashion if you are working on that project and it's out of fashion as a good product owner you should end that project to 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 reduce um loss within the project so manage constraints when you talk about constraints we talk about scope how do you manage constraints you have um it's good if you if you if you are not a good project manager you wouldn't know that you need to do um a scope management you wouldn't know that you need to do um project charter within your project when you are when you are doing your project charter project charter will help you to identify the scope the cost the resources a lot of things you need to know about the project is contained within the project charter and as a as 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 an intelligent project manager it's one of the first thing you need to to lay your hands on to understand the project very well before you start but if you don't know the scope when you are asked to to build a simple um, e-commerce application you might start building um blog adding blogs and the, the rest of them and by the time you are finished building blogs integrating blog you are you must run out of resources so if you know your scope and prioritize your scope you should know some some flashy activities within the project shouldn't distract you you should be focused if you if you identify your project scope very well schedule your resources a portion cost within every resources when you do this project um, plan very well using all the necessary tools then it won't be difficult for you to manage your constraints your timeline your budget these are constraints balance the influence of constraints on the project just the same thing just um um discuss in uh, managing a uh, uh, constraints money changes in a better manner most project is about change and if you don't know how to manage change in a project it's going to be difficult there are so many kind of change so you need to do proper change management you need to if you, are, if you are driving for a new project you find out for instance an organization if you are introducing a new technology that they don't know how to use there will be resistance from the employees and some of these employees as some of them might be in the company for 20 years 
So they pay their bills. You cannot push them around. Their voice will be here when they raise their voice. So these kind of people, you need to manage them very well. You need to have apply change management. How do you apply change management? Try to engage them, to sensitize them, educate them on the importance of this particular new initiative, which is the project you are, you are initiating or you are managing. Try to buy them over to support you. You need to do politics in project management. You need to buy in stakeholders. So this is how to manage uh, change in a better manner. Um, at this point, I'll give you um, some time to, to ask questions because um, it's not a one-way traffic. I talk to you, you talk to me. So before we, con we, before we proceed, let's do a bit of uh, interaction. So let me hear, you know, if you, are, you have any question within what we've... Um, uh, said so far. So before I continue, any question? Okay, that makes me a good teacher. I'll crack on. We've um, seen the importance of um, good project management setting, the benefits. But say we don't have a good project management structure in place, what are the impacts, the absence of project management? Poorly managed project or absence of project management may result in miss, in miss deadline. Deadline is very important in projects. When you are mean to deploy your projects in three months, three months is three months. If that project need to run outside three months, there must be a good reason. For instance, you are managing a project using um, taxpayers' money. Before you know it, you start seeing petition from here and there. You are mismanaging their projects. So it's very, very important. For instance, well, let me show you a situation where timeline is very important. Look at this uh, COVID-19, this pandemic. Countries, organizations have been working so hard to implement or develop a vaccine. And you, as an organization, you reach a contract with British government to deliver vaccines within three months. And then the prime minister give a statement telling the whole country that we are going to have a vaccine within six months, that everybody should calm down, that we are working on something. Just look at if you are not a good project manager and you are managing that project, the whole country, everybody is waiting for you in six months and you start talking blah, blah, blah. 
<laughs> of course, you know the implication that uh, you might land yourself in jail for not having a good reason for delivering that project within that timeline. So that is the importance of timeline. You might look at it as a small, it's not a, it's a big issue. Timeline is important. And if now, if you didn't deliver, now they will say that the prime minister is a liar. And before you know it, now they'll start calling on prime minister to, to resign, just like they are calling on Boris Johnson to resign. It's not funny. And then we'll talk about cost overall. After budgeting, um, maybe the, 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 the chance, chancellor of the exchequer uh, approving uh, 2 billion pounds to produce this vaccine. And you come back to say that um, that two, two, 2 billion is not enough. We need additional 1 billion. How will the, how will the chancellor do that? How, how will he do that? Get the money from where? You know, the process will take to, to release that kind of money. So you when well, well before you 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 working within the project team, you give if you are given an opportunity to give a cost, you make sure you do a thorough job before bringing the cost. You don't come uh, in between the uh, the project and start demanding for more money. If you are a good project manager, this will not happen. Poor quality. When you are staggering with your timeline and staggering with your managing your cost, the next thing is uh, you'll be staggering delivering a quality project or quality product. And the next thing is to rework, go and do it again. Do it again means more money from where? That is it. That's why they are looking for competent project manager because they don't want all these dramas. Or controlled expansion of the project. How can a project keep on expanding? You keep on expanding because you don't know your, you don't know your boundaries. You've um, moved out of your boundaries and start moving to another person's lane. So that's why the project keep on expanding. But if you know your boundary, you work within your boundary, within your project scope. If you've done a thorough scope management, you work within your scope. And the issue of um, uncontrolled expansion will not uh, uh, be applied. A loss of reputation as the project manager as an organization. If you've done such a stupid work, you'll be seeing the next thing you get is a sack. Not only a sack, your reputation will be mod. If you are managing for a big company, for instance, a high pro, they, they see as a, uh, let me continue using this uh, pandemic as an illustration. You are there the whole country because they will know who is managing the project, who is um, producing vaccine for the whole nation, who is managing these projects. And all of a sudden, you couldn't deliver, you couldn't produce the vaccine. Huh. What, what do you think will happen? For instance, uh, we are a project manager with Pfizer, and Pfizer will give us giving this kind of. Um, this is going to be a very big bad reputation for Pfizer. You know, next time, look, no, not even a, you know, Pfizer is, is, is a big brand. So if you bring this kind of um, bad image to the bad reputation to them, no country will give them um, contract anymore. 
no hospitals, no healthcare, no they 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 will lose their image because they don't know how to manage projects. Unsatisfied stakeholders, stakeholders will not be happy with you. You'll be having issues with stakeholders. Failure in achieving the objective for which the project was undertaken. And at the end of the whole thing, because of uh, miss deadline, cost overrun, poor quality work, how many times they asked you to rework, uncontrolled expansion, the everything will boil down to not achieving the objective. And that's why we have uh, project management um, best practice to help you or help organization um, stay away from this kind of uh, experience, bad experience. Now we've seen the books, the, the benefits of good project management. Okay, Simon is raising her. Yes, <clears throat> yeah, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, so you alluded to cost. Yeah. Uh, uh, my question is, so when costing for a project, let's say you're doing a construction project mm. that will run for, let's say, three years. Mm. Uh, my understanding is that it won't be necessarily possible for you to factor in all the risk. So, for example, you may be doing a project and then in the middle of the project, maybe during the construction phase, you find out that there are some old piles piling mm. in the ground condition. So if that happens, it then means there may be uh, some sort of variation that you have to agree with your contractor, maybe your principal contractor. So how would you as a project manager factor this in? Because then you require more money. Before you before you start the project, you, there are something called the um, uh, project evaluation. You do environmental impact assessment to do every all, all the assessment necessary before you start the project. You, you look at some of all these areas that um, you, if you are doing a, an underground, you must look at, you must uh, get um, contact different uh, ministries, waterways, all these people. You need to look at a lot of um, designs. You, um, what these people they call the urban planning to look at all the next we are talking about construction projects that's what I'm, we need to look at all these um, good papers approval from all these people before you start your construction making sure that there is no waterway there is no this there is no cable you can't just uh, start laying foundation without knowing what is uh, beneath the ground you need to equal it like an oil company. You need to do environmentally pass assessments thoroughly. And there is um, a project, oil company that wanted to come to my community. But the first thing we did the uh, environmental impact assessment, they found out that the cost of um, the, the, the risk involved is more than the, the benefit, and they abandoned the, the, the a portion of that particular oil deposit. So this is what you have to do. But in a situation, something happened, uh, there's, we have a, a lot of risk that nobody can, like pandemic, let me use pandemic. It's something you cannot, uh, you don't know that pandemic is coming. Nobody knows that Ebola is coming. And nobody knows that um, COVID is coming. And you are managing a project. And all of a sudden, they close down and say, lockdown. And you need to go on site. But the government says, stay at home. There's what we call change management. There's what we call change requests. 
exceptional circumstance in project management. Then you need to apply for change requests. You need to use exceptional circumstance, change request form to capture this circumstance while we are making requests for more money or for project or for, for or to get more time or to get more money, either for budget or for timeline. That's how you capture this area. I hope I've answered your question, uh, Barrister Simon. Yes, thank you. Okay. Any more question? Good. Let's crack on. I like a situation where I will be rattled like uh, just uh, Barista Simon did. It makes the class uh, more interacting and uh, engaging. So well, now we've looked at um, the benefits of um, managing projects very well and the impact, negative impact of uh, not having a good uh, project management uh, structure in place. So now what is the ideal, ideal uh, project management setting? the characteristics of a good project management. For you to have a good project manage, uh, management um, structure, a project must have a beginning and an end. When you are starting the project, you know when the, the project is beginning and you know when the project is uh, ending you need to apply these two um, ending. You know, you need to know it's end to end. We call it, you need to know the life cycle. Life cycle is when you're managing a project from beginning to the end. So you need to know the life cycle. That is number one. When you know the life cycle, then other things will follow. A project must be temporal in nature. I've never seen a project that lasts forever. So you have a mindset that it's going to be a temporal endeavor. Then stakeholder management is an essential part of project management. Stakeholders are the highest nice men in project management. Stakeholders, like now if you are going for the interview as a project manager, they will not ask you two questions without asking you how are you going to manage difficult stakeholders? Because these are the people that, um, they are not robots. They are not like a program, maybe like other tools you are going to use in project management. In project management, most of the things you are going to be using are tools. So when you program the tool, you'll be getting results, but you cannot project program stakeholders. So you need to use the necessary stakeholder management to manage stakeholders like um, stakeholder management document where we have a uh, um, power grid, communication uh, plan, um, racing metrics. You need to apply all these things, know how to use all these techniques to manage your stakeholders very well and understand them. It's very important. Stakeholder management, once I understand the objective of the project, the next thing is to identify my stakeholders and do my stakeholder analysis. Understand them a bit before you start uh, with other things. 
And when you understand your stakeholder, the next thing is to have a defined project structure. That's the project plan. Even if you are not um, coming up with a definite, a definitive project plan, you need a preliminary project plan, which will come in form of uh, project breakdown structure. Once you break your project down using project breakdown structure, you will see that your project is taking shape and you see the beauty of your project start coming out. If you are not, if you are, if you are not applying breakdown structure as a project manager, I'm sorry, you are a cowboy in project management. Involve a team of people with essential skill. When doing projects, when you do your um, identify your team members, you need to use racing metrics to identify everybody's responsibilities. What are they going to be doing? What are they going to be contributing in this project? Although it's not going to be a duty, um, it's going to be due to the, the HR. But at times, if, if, if you are managing a project as a project manager and there is need to engage more workforce, you find out that you will be part of the hiring team to validate people that are going to join your team. So these are some of these qualities. Validating skill sets. A project is unique and in nature. Once you have in mind that every project is not the same, it will be very uh, easy for you to manage your projects. Yes, you can apply as a good project manager, you can apply the project management techniques within any kind of project you are managing. But it will be very difficult uh, for every project to have the same timeline the same budget, the same stakeholder expectation. No matter how similar and close, you find out that they still have their unique natures and manage them uniquely. Even if they are the same, you find out that the team, project team, they are not going to be the same. So once you have all these in mind, then you are a happy project manager. So now we've um, introduced the project management. The next thing we need to do is um, to look at some of the career roads available within project management. The career roles are project, we have project manager, we have PMO analyst, we have project coordinator, we have project support officer, and we have change manager. These are different roles you can work. After this um, formal program, you can work as a project manager, PMO analyst, project coordinator, project support officer, and change manager. A project manager tend to be the biggest role, although at times you find out that PMO, depending the organization, organizational structure, you might find out that a PMO, a project manager might be under, under PMO. PMO is just like a, a project management police, policing everything going on in the project, even policing the project manager. So 
And at times you'll find out that a change manager is a very powerful person within the organization, even more powerful than the project manager. But these two roles, project coordinator and project support officer, they are heavily under project manager and other roles. As a project manager, you manage, monitor, and control all areas of the project to ensure successful execution, ensuring project deliverables meet quality expectation outlined at the project initiation. Implement and manage changes where needed. Manage stakeholders. Create a project schedule and timeline. You are the person to create and manage your timeline very well and track them. Deliver and install technological solution. For instance, if you are going to be managing your project, it's your duty to know the kind of uh, technology you are going to be using. For instance, I might decide that in this project, you are going to be using JIRA at this point to manage and track your project. It's your duty to install that. You might be needing um, um, base camp for collaboration and project tracking. It's your duty to install and deliver all these uh, solutions that you are going to be using for your project. Creating a project plan to track and monitor the project budget and resources. This is your duties. Monitor project risk and issues. You must have a plan to monitor your project risk and issues. Have risk plan. You have a um, red log, which you use to do all this. Conduct your read, um, read meeting every week. Manage multiple simult uh, projects simultaneously. As a project manager, you will find a situation that you need to you need to be part of two projects. More especially, these the two projects might be complementary. They need your input or your expertise in this project. Our organization might just want you to be multitasking. It's a good uh, skill to, 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 be, to have the capacity to be able to manage two projects at the same time. I've done that, I manage up to, but when you are managing it, your role is now exceeding project manager. You are now becoming the program manager. Help define scope and goals of the project. As a project manager, you must make input in defining the project scope and the project goal. Maybe during the creation of project chapter, you need to be there to, to make sure that the goals are, is identified and uh, assessed and create scope, dependencies, and uh, all the deliverables. Assembling project team, team members, and managing team expectation is their duty at the beginning of the project to identify the project team members, call them for a meeting, um, clarify the project goals, aims, objectives, and clear expectation, what is expected from everybody. And to do that, you need uh, a good knowledge of racing metrics. I'm going to come to that. Where racing means uh, responsible, uh, accountable, informed, and consulted. So you need to know what is your responsibilities. You need to know what is your accountability. You need to know whom to inform. And you need to know whom to be consulted and you need to teach the team members all this they need to know all this so that is um 
the responsibilities of a project manager in a nutshell? Once you understand the way project management is structured, you find out that all these things are not so difficult. But by the time you finish, and the, okay, um, Isaac is raising a hand. Uh, Mr. Charles. Yes, Mr. Let's, Isaac. Let's say you're a project manager. Mm. And you're being hired by an organization yeah. to, to complete a project, say in six months. Yeah. And already have a, they already have existing team members. And by the time you interacted with them, you found out that most of them are not really competent as they ought to be, to be able to execute that project, to drive it to, to completion as, as, as at a six months time. In that case, what would you do as a project manager? Are you joining or are you initiating? You are joining an existing project. Yes, we are joining a, yes an existing project. And you're already you're joining existing team members. And by the time you interact with them, you find out that most of them were not as competent as they ought to be in the various roles they ought to play in that project. And knowing that using them will mean exceeding the timeline. So what will be done? When you find out that um, a project team member is not competent, then you report that you must have an evidence to that effect. You can't. Well, you must have a a, a to measure competency. Is either the, the 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 work delivered is of poor quality, or they are not meeting the the time, or they are not. So you must have a reason. You must document evidence, evidence before you can um, uh, make a raise issue for change of personnel within your projects. If you are if a situation that you have a competent uh, developer, there must be uh, evidence of not uh, being competent. These are what you are going to use. Raise the issue with the um, Either who is the line manager, is he the program director, or the project um, sponsor, or the HR, with your evidence. You know, you cannot just, um, you can't just, uh, these days, you cannot just, um, uh, as a project manager, sack your project team member like that. Is against the law. You must uh, provide a, a reason because you might just try to be victimizing your, your this because you don't like personal wanting. So you must have a genuine reason. You must have the documented evidence of not being competent. So you must define your competency before you can fire the person because the person must have passed through all the necessary recruitment processes, competent questions before they hire the person. So these are the things. And moreover, you are not the person that started the project. So these are some of the things you need to discuss with the your line manager or the project, um, the project initiator or the, 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 the project, uh, the, the product owner, whoever owns the product or the client. So, but the, the, the bottom line answer is that an incompetent team member can be changed, but there must be an evidence to avoid the victimization. Okay, sir. Yeah. Any other question? Okay, we crack on. The next is a PMO analyst. 
PMO provides project management support, ensures standardization within the project. Ensures a PMO analyst or a, a PMO of your project management office. <coughs> the full name is a project management officer. They are the police of the project manage, uh, management. The police is the project activities. Why they are very powerful is that a PMO can be policing up to three projects or four projects at the same time, making sure there is a standard. We are using the, the best practice. Companies might have a, 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 a specified way of managing their projects. Project management approach, communication plan, templates, you find out that some project managers might decide to be using their own templates. Like I am now, I have so many templates as a project manager, different types of templates that are very beautiful, even more beautiful than so many organizations I've worked with. But I respected their policies and used their own template the way they want it. If they want you, if they give you free hand to, to, to use templates or use a methodology. Even methodology need to be specified within the project charter before the project starts. You know the methodology you are using. So you cannot just even use your own methodology because it, you have to follow everything. So this is the job of the PMO. It's not a track, it's, it's, it's not kind of tracking um monitoring team members is monitoring more or less monitoring the project manager making sure that all the deliverables if at uh, this week this kind of deliverable like a stakeholder um let me say um requirement analysis documents need to come out that's going to be the deliverable the PMO need to make sure that that document is documented at the right place. And he's getting that document the day that document should come out. So if the project manager is missing timeline, you'll be having issues with your PMOs. These are ways to checkmate project managers, making sure that they are not dull. They are doing what they are supposed to be doing. So it's like uh, policing the project managers. So they create a common set of principles and practice to help and support with uh, the project governance processes. Creation and designing of project management templates, management of financial and budget forecasting, gather data and track performance of multiple projects manage resources forecast capture project changes requests and track any change implementation so they gather data and track performance across so many projects so they, they monitor the performance of all the projects going on within the organization they do financial forecasting so if you are going, if you, they have access to all the documents, if you are a rough manager, if you are an extra, extravagant manager, they should be one monitoring the way you manage your, your, your budget. And they can call you to order, tell you that the way you are going with this project is not, uh, is not comfortable. The way you are managing your budget. They capture changes. If there is changes, within the project, something need to change, either the, the timeline need to change or some area within the project need to change. You need to add some requirements within the project. When the, you as a project manager, you capture those changes, they, you, all those changes been um, submitted to the uh, project management office and the project management officers administer and implement 
those changes. They manage those changes to get either they get approval for you or they decline on that changes, change request. So all the change requests, they manage it. As either they, after uh, reviewing the change you are requesting, they will say, yes, we grant the change that you want a uh, extension of time within your timeline from six months, we are requ requesting an additional two months. They will say, okay, uh, we understand that uh, it's this pan pandemic that caused this and they grant you. But if you are requesting for, for instance, additional money or timeline, and they are not comfortable or additional requirements, you, you do not uh, have enough reason, they will decline and you face the consequences if the project goes down or the project uh, didn't uh, reach co a successful completion or didn't meet the quality. Because uh, you find out that uh, they must have uh, reviewed the project, even if they, they, they approve the changes you are requesting for, it might not still make any changes based on the way we're managing the project. Then we have project coordinator. Project coordinator ensures that a particular project is progressing as it should be. Project coordinators are responsible for ensuring schedule, budget, and details of giving tasks are well organized. Uh, uh, I, this coordinator is more of um, closely assisting the project manager. They communicate with various stakeholders to keep everyone informed about changes to the project plan. They organize reporting, plan meeting, and provide updates to project managers. So these are the kind of uh, close assistant to the project manager. They do a lot of um, management, uh, in-house management uh, within the project. So mainly, they are, most of the time, their jobs are almost the jobs of project manager, but the jobs that they are, they are being considered lower than project manager. Most of the time they are junior project managers. They are, they are classified as junior project managers. Then we have a project support officer. A project support officer is not the same thing uh, with project coordinator. They are mainly providing um, administrative support. They are admin officers working within the projects. So they might not have a lot of skills as a project um, coordinator or as project manager, but they have administrative skills that will help you to manage that project very well. They help in diary management, they support in coordination and planning of the project, support in coordination of reports, develop and create effective communication mechanism. They might be creating meeting, you know, like for instance, you are having a project um, workshop, they might be the one to create the work. They are kind of virtual assistants within that project, creating workshop within the project, um, creating meeting, I mean, um, meeting itineraries, um, details like sharing of uh, Zoom details after meeting, they generate the minutes of the meeting or transcript of the meeting, document all these things in a report, manage diaries within the, if you go to most of the project uh, uh, 
collaborative software, they have inbuilt diaries where you schedule activities. They are the people managing all this. They can equally be monitoring project um, due dates. Although most of the uh, most of the, the the application we are using uh, can be automated. That once we have a, a due date in any particular deliverable or task, it will be triggered. You have you receive as a project manager, you receive a, a push notification. So you might not need a project uh, support officer to remind you about the due date of a project or I mean the due date of any deliverable or task within the project. So this is their job. They are junior officers within the project management circle. So this is their job. They just say more of administrative tasks. I call them virtual assistants within the project. Then you have change managers. Change managers focus on the people side of um, change to minimize resistance, just like when we are looking at it uh, from the beginning. When you are initiating uh, a new project, a solution, there is um, every possibility of uh, resistance, more especially if the the employees or the personnel, they are not uh, comfortable. They don't have, uh, they are going to struggle with the skill sets. So it's your duty to sensitize them and organize various training to upskill them, to make sure that they have the, the required skills to use the solution or to make sure that they are comfortable within the, uh, desired change initiative. So as a change manager, manage all the changes to business processes, systems, and technologies. So all the changes within this, within this uh, business activities, is it solution or is it um, system? Is it process improvement? You need to manage all those changes changes activities coming either resistance uh, resistance to change so you must know as a, as a as a change manager you must have a change management plan to handle all this you have a uh, resistance to change plan all the change initiative all the change activities everything pertaining the project the, you must have a plan to manage the changes to make sure that everything, um, the, pro the, the project is being delivered without any resistance, either from the, uh, any, within the, any quarter, within all the stakeholders, is your duty to manage the changes. A successful implementation of change strategies to promote employees' adoption, create resistance management plan, lead change management activities, assess change impact and assess readiness uh, for change. So support training need, complete change management assessment, coach and support the project team. These are all the various activities you need to undertake and discharge as a change manager. So you can see it's a bit different from the conventional project manager. They are dealing with changes most of the time. And they are gaining popularity within the industry because um, changes are one of the factors that uh, driving um project down so many projects uh fail to to achieve the, the desired goal because of high resistance 
coming from different quarters, either from stakeholders or, or from the employees. So you need to help project managers. If they are so many of the time, find out that the team are struggling. If they are struggling with uh, even some stakeholders, some can see good project manager can liaise with an experienced change manager to on um, how to manage some of the difficult stakeholders. So, and here is where we are going to stop tonight. And um, tomorrow, we are going to, let me see if we can cover this um, today. Okay. Okay, let's quickly cover this today as well, because we still have uh, some time. Now we've uh, looked at um, career roles. All these roles we've treated, they are all career roles within project management. You can work within as a career, as a professional, within project management, within all these um, roles. So the next thing we are going to look at is the project management, not career roles, but team, team roles. For instance, what we mean by team rules is in a project now, what are the rules? What, are, what is your role within that project? An ongoing project, not as a career, but within the team. So we have project manager who is going to be the leader of that uh, project. As we mentioned above, the project manager is responsible for managing the project management knowledge, uh, project management knowledge areas through the project. You see the same uh, roles, uh, the same um, responsibilities we discussed earlier. That's the same responsibility. You are a project manager, it doesn't change. So that's what the project manager uh, does within a project, managing the project, tracking projects, project plan, and the rest of them. We'll discuss this. So let's move to uh, project sponsor. The project sponsor represents the customer or client of the project. This is the person that is sponsoring the project or the client. For instance, if I'm working with um, um, KPMG and um, KPMG want um, uh, Tesco's want want us as a KPMG or essential to implement a solution for them. Maybe CRM solution, then Tesco's is now the customer, or Tesco becomes the client in that project. So we are working for the Tesco's, they are now the project um, sponsor or the customer. So that's what I mean by project sponsor. Within the organization, a department head 
might initiate a project, like head of finance can initiate a project within finance department to automate all the most of the processes within the, the finance. In this respect, that finance head or head of finance department is now the sponsor of this particular project because he initiated this project. He's driving this change. If we're implementing a robotic process automation in this project, his role in this project is sponsorship. He stand there as a stakeholder, as a sponsor. He aligns the project with the business goal, strategy, and objective, ensuring that the projects projects prosper, uh, project, uh, proper launch and their execution. So he ensures that they launch this project and the execution within the time frame and uh, within the budget. Managing the risk and changes will ensuring the project's quality equally um, help in risk management. Because he is the sponsor, most of the time they are interested in the positive outcome of this project. They are some of the when we are going to do our um, stakeholder analysis, some of these uh, some of these stakeholders, they have high power in the project and they have high interest. So they, they, they want success from this project. So if you engage this kind of uh, stakeholders very often, you won't have pro you won't have problem with them because they desire for success within this project. To help to mitigate the risk for you and manage changes, uh, any changes that they can uh, help you to, to, to mitigate or they will help you to get most of these things if you collaborate and uh, engage them more often. These people, they, they know, they have the, they are, when you are going to do the requirement gathering, they are one of the people you need to consider because they have the project vision, which you need to understand very well. They are, they are the, the, the big man within the project. Then we have project team members. Team members are key professionals like developers, business analysts, testers, web designers, and co. They work to contribute to the process of producing deliverable, managing risk, achieving project goals. Their main responsibilities are solve project objectives, complete tasks in areas of expertise, deliver project responsibilities within deadline, communicate with project lead, on road blog and document progress, setback and new processes. So these are the, the, the team members. If you are working within agile environment like agile scrum, we call these people development team. But generally the conventional project setting they are project team members. They do the day-to-day -day activities, you know, deploying various de deliverables within the project. They are the like developers in a in the construction sites. They are the plumbers, uh, electricians, and the rest of them. But in IT projects, they can be developers, um, programmers, web developers, testers, and uh, business analysts still fall within this uh, uh, group.
Then we have um, stakeholders. These are most of the time a nightmares within the project because it's very difficult to manage stakeholders, but we'll be managing them. So if you have the, the required skills and then know the process to manage them very well, you will have a problem with them. This is a person or a group who has a vested interest or stake in the project. The project manager must communicate project progress to, uh, to stakeholders throughout the project life cycle. My responsibilities are commit and provide appropriate resources to the project manager program teams, if applicable. Educate the project program team about their business and objectives, ensuring the project objective through program fits with the business strategy. Like I said, these people are the big men. They can be a subject matter experts. Subject matter experts are the people who have the expert knowledge within the area of this project. They can be employees that have been working in that company for 20 years as um, a cyber security uh, manager in, in the area of uh, security department, IT security. They can be a uh, finance director that be, might be there for, for long. It, it, it could be a program manager. So these are big, big um, people. We probably have customers. They are still stakeholders, you know? So stakeholders are everybody that have vested interest. Most of the time we regard stakeholders as these big men. Yes, but there's other stakeholders within the project, you know? Customers who uses the, the, the product or the end users, for instance, if you are deploying customers relationship management solution. Those people that will be using that customership relationship, uh, that CRM solution at the end to, to do sales, to do marketing, they are all stakeholders. They are going to use this. They are all stakeholders. They, although they might not be high power stakeholders or high, yes, high power, but they're all stakeholders. So stakeholders provide specific precise requirement and set of uh, requirement priorities. When gathering requirements, you need to invite everybody. You need to interview everybody, try to gather requirements. Even from these people, the end users, they are very important stakeholders because they are the people that are going to be using that solution. For instance, if you are doing a process improvement, if you are improving on the way the organization, uh, the operational processes, maybe the way they share their, their data sharing or data capturing, you need to understand the way they have been doing it and why they are having problem in their current process. It's not the CEOs or the directors that are, are using it. They are the end users. It might be uh, low level staff like um, customer support uh, personnel. They are the people using all this solution you are trying to. So you must try to understand them as well in order to know um, their pain point, the, the problem they are having using that solution. That will help you to know how we are going to improve on that particular process. But this particular issue is the duty of a business analyst. So, but I'm just trying to paint picture who is stakeholder and who is not a stakeholder. They help to make timely decision 
review and provide timely feedback regarding relevant projects for program work. Promptly communicate changes to requirements. Ownership of business processes and procedures and projects to program deliverable. They keep informed of projects of projects to program progress and send information to others who need to know. They assist in establishing and executing training. They approve key projects and program deliverable, if applicable, include final sign, signing or sign off acceptance during the closure. They identify and resolve any uh, project and issues and risk. So all these, that's why, that's why it's very important to engage with the stakeholders because any step you take, you find out there is a stakeholder waiting for you to collaborate to do the work. As you can see, they assist in establishing and executing training. They are there. They keep informed. Or, uh, they keep informed of pro uh, pro uh, project and progress reports. The progress they need to know. So you, are, you keep at the end of every week. You have stakeholders. You need to report. You provide them what we call the project status report. These are stakeholders. They need to know about the progress of the of the, the, the project. Knowing about the, pro, the progress, we are reporting to somebody like um, program director or program manager. They are all stakeholders. When you have issues, when you have risk, there are some risks you need to transfer. If you document how to manage your risk, there are some risks you own, some risks you transfer some risk you escalate. So as a project manager, if you're escalating a risk, then you need to escalate maybe to the program manager. The program manager might then escalate the risk to the next level. So you, keep, you can transfer the risk. You can equally, um, engage an insurance company. Once you have somebody like an insurance company managing a risk, they become stakeholders as well. You need to be working with them to identify and resolve some of your issues because they are now part of the, 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 the program. Here in UK, most of the construction is so on most of the projects, but let's just use construction. You cannot even enter the site without proper insurance policy. Simon knows what I'm talking about. So such insurance company that is uh, undertaking uh, managing that risk is now a stakeholder, but they might become an external stakeholder. So we have in turn, both internal stakeholders, we have external stakeholders, we have high power stakeholders, we have no high power, high interest stakeholder, high power, high interest stakeholder, low um, power, low interest, uh, low interest stakeholder, um, low power and high interest stakeholder. By the time we get to stakeholder management, all these things will be very clear to you. But these are, uh, they are still a team member within a project. So these are the various roles we have in project management uh, team, not as in career, but as in within the team, a live project. These are the various roles we have. So we are going to stop here. Tomorrow we start from
project management component. But within all this we've had so far, you can ask your questions. So once you finish with your questions, then we are going to um, call it a night. So I'm ready to take your question at this point. Can I go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you for a great delivery. Um, the session has been quite thought-provoking and at the same time, uh, very instructive. Uh, my question then is, uh, where do we place um, project planners? Because I do often see on projects, uh, people that are referred to as project planners. I'm always confused as to you know, what their position is as just opposed against uh, project, uh, project managers. Project, project planners, we place them as coordinators. You know? Okay. They, they are not project okay. managers. I've, I've, um, I've seen that, but they are not there. You see, they are planning. You see, planning and coordination is almost the the, the same, um, uh, serving the same purpose. They coordinate, they plan, they support the, the main project manager, you know, but they are not fully project managers. They are not, they are not junior project managers. Can, um, you know, in, in project management, we have, like we have a junior project manager, senior project manager, mid project managers. So many of them have a, a very good experience that they cannot be classified as a junior project manager, but they are not project managers. So I classify them as project coordinators. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, any more questions? Good. Well, I, I appreciate everyone for this session. And um, I'll see you same time tomorrow so that uh, we keep cracking up. So, good night to everyone. Mm -hmm.